Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to speed up and save battery life on your Galaxy S20, S20 Ultra, or S20 Plus. I do have the Ultra right here. So we're gonna walk through a couple of the steps. Make sure to also check out our first things you should do video because that will have different things such as getting rid of uh, certain things on the device and making the device overall better experience. So first let's go and work on how to speed up the device. Now we're gonna start by just getting rid of two things. So you wanna get rid of Samsung Daily. This will allow your home screen to move much faster. And then you're just gonna simply get rid of any apps that you don't need that come with the device. I myself do not use Spotify, so I'm going to uninstall that one as well as the Samsung Global one. I have no really use for that. So these are ones that come with the device. Now, if you run into something that you don't wanna use, some might allow you to disable it. This is still really important to do, even if you can't get rid of it, just because what that does allow for is it'll make sure that it doesn't use your RAM or anything else in the background. So you wanna get rid of anything first. And as you can see, there's a lot of RAM being taken up right now. So I wanna make sure to correct that. So let's go ahead and start going to connections. Then we're gonna to go to Wi-Fi, And then we're going to go to settings right here and advanced. So the first thing I would make sure to turn on is turn on Wi-Fi automatically whenever you can and you have a good Wi-Fi location. This will be beneficial because Wi-Fi uses less battery than 5G or LTE, so it's a good way to go. Now you can use this basically if it detects that uh, Wi-Fi is kind of strenuous, it will switch back and forth, so kind of make sure to always do that. Um, I'm going to test this out. This is newer. So if you want, leave this off for now and uh, ask me in the comment section about it and I will do a further in-depth comment if I did see an improvement for it. Okay, then we're gonna want to go to data usage and turn on data saver. What this does is it makes sure that apps don't use data in the background. Now, there are obviously certain exceptions that you would want to have uh, for this, such as um, say your email, or anything very important to you that you wanna make sure like, okay, well, I want this to be able to run in the background. So kind of go through this, turn on which apps you want for that purpose. And that way you're gonna have a much better experience. And again, apps won't be using your data in the background when they don't need to. This again, is a whole thing because there's a lot of things that run in the background and you wanna kind of prevent it from doing that. All right, then we are going to go to display. And a couple of things on display. Um, first of all, I would never have on auto brightness. Uh, for me, it's a waste. Um, however, you do want to uh, have the brightness always, I would say to about uh, 70 is a good kind of place. 80% is pretty much right at that line. Um, so I would say at about 70 is a good kind of range to go with uh, for your brightness. If you actually just maintain it on that, it's gonna be a lot better than the sensor always kind of keeping track of what the brightness level is and it's gonna actually be beneficial to you in terms of battery life. You obviously wanna go dark mode. It's going to be much better for an AMOLED display. Basically, the more black you have on your wallpapers and everything that you have is going to be a much better way of doing things. So, in terms of that, I would just always leave that on, apply it to everything you can. Now, obviously the refresh rate is a big thing that people have been talking about. If you do wanna save battery life, you wanna keep it at 60 Hertz. If you put it to 120, it will kill about your phone approximately about two hours quicker. Uh, so just know that that's the trade off for it. Um, it's up to you, but that's gonna be a better way to save battery life. Now, resolution, you can actually crank up all the way. It doesn't affect battery life very much. So between this, there's no difference. The 720, you will notice a bit of difference, but I would do that for like power saving and things like that that we'll get to in a second when you put it to 720p. But I would keep it at 1440 for most uh, uses. I am in my testing phase, so I won't do it yet because I'm gonna switch it to 120 Hz and kind of test out the battery life there. Screen timeout, I would leave it at one minute to five minutes depending on your preference. Navigation bar. So navigation bar, if you do use the buttons, um, which I have grown accustomed to not using them anymore, 
but if you do want to use the buttons right here that's a permanent black bar so it actually does help your battery life because that part of the screen just like the top is always black so again that saves your battery life but it's up to you if you want to choose to go with that i like the full screener look but that is again going to save you battery life uh, definitely make sure the accidental screen touch is on. This is really important for your pocket and things such as that nature. So make sure that that's on. And uh, in terms of screen sensitivity, if you do keep the screen protector on it, or if you buy a screen protector for this device, make sure you turn that touch sensitivity on, which I will be doing once I put a new screen protector on here. Then we're going to go to location. So if you have problems with GPS, this is something you can look into, but I never really have any issues. So I usually turn Bluetooth scanning off. This basically uses Bluetooth even when your device is off, uh, a Bluetooth off. So this is really important to kind of make sure you leave on just because again, it's gonna give you a much better experience in terms of battery life without your Bluetooth always being on even when you have it labeled as off. Next, we're going to go to advanced features. So first part is Bigsby routines. Now, this is a really big one just because of the fact that Bigsby routines can really help you on saving battery life in lots of different ways. It's kind of like an app called If This Then That. And basically the idea is if I'm home, then turn on Wi-Fi. If I'm on the go, then turn off Wi-Fi. I don't need Wi-Fi when I'm traveling. It's just going to waste it. Uh, and basically it's gonna be looking for little Wi-Fi's like Starbucks or things like that that I might pass by, and it's gonna try to grab onto them. That's just wasting battery life. So setting up these routines are really uh, good, as well as also like things like advanced uh, battery saving. So mine automatically turns to like a power saving setup as soon as I need it to when it's below 35%. So that's a big thing, just to kind of make sure you can kind of set things up the way you want it, exactly how you like it. And you can see what Samsung has created, but overall I would start building your own routines just so you know, again, even when I go to my mom's house, the Wi-Fi turns on automatically when I get there. So things like that, it's just really good uh, to maintain for your work. Any place you typically have Wi-Fi, turn Wi-Fi on. When you're on the go, turn Wi-Fi off, pretty simple or when you Bluetooth connect to your car, turn Wi-Fi off. Okay, then we are going to go to the biggest portion of this, which is device care. So device care has a lot of things uh, that will help you improve battery life, so let's get to it. First of all, um, you can use power optimize or medium power saving. I typically just like optimize overall, or you can do high performance if you're doing stress testing, which like I'll do for when I do benchmarks. You can also have adapt power saving on, which is again, really kind of just reads your phone, your usage, and makes sure that nothing's running in the background when you don't need to. However, there's a manual way of doing this, which I do prefer for especially specific apps. So app power management. You have sleeping apps, which automatically are apps that if you don't really use them that often, they go into sleeping, which means they don't really get that much uh, information right in the background. They do still run, but they're not running at full capacity, but they basically get little bits of information. Here's the one that I really recommend kind of adding a lot of apps to that you don't ever need to run in the background. These apps will not work at all in the background. So I would add to your collection here. I pretty much add like every game and things of that nature. So I'm going to run through all my apps just so I can kind of let you guys see the difference of if you actually make all these apps off, we'll look at the RAM afterward. All right, guys, so I have greatly added a lot of deep sleep apps here. Again, any app that you do not need to run in the background, you can add here. But if you're not sure, just don't put it on here just to be safe. Also, you can add apps that you never want to be put to sleep. This might be your social media, emails, things like that that are very important that you just wanna make sure it just never does it just to be safe than sorry. All right. That being said, we're gonna to go to charging here and turn on fast charge. So right off the bat, it has super fast charge on, but it does not have regular fast charge on, which is a third party adapter. So make sure to turn that on just so it charges faster. Um, don't know why Samsung put that off, but it's something you definitely wanna do. Again, it will improve your speed. And already, I just wanna actually point out we have a lot more RAM available. We were like at, I think two gigs free, now we're at six gigs free. So again, this is what you want. You want less things 
to run in the background. The other thing we wanna do is accessibility. And from here, I just wanna to go to advanced settings and then make sure to turn on color adjustment when you click volume up and the side button. Now, what this is actually going to do is under visibility enhancements and color adjustment, if you turn it on to grayscale, what this will do is basically when you need more battery life and you're on a long day, I usually always do this at theme parks. This doesn't degrade your kind of experience, it just turns off the colors. And what that allows for is just having a better battery life because it's less bright on your screen while still maintaining everything else. So it's just a really good way if you need to save battery life, just turn that on and off and you're gonna have a much longer battery life because of it. So it's just a really good thing to do to again, improve your battery life. Okay, then we're going to go to one last step. Now, Samsung has added two things. They've added reduce animations and they've also added to remove animations. There's actually a better one in between the two, which is in developer options. So we're gonna to go to that now and give you a better overall experience. So first we're gonna click about phone right here at the bottom. Then you're going to go to software information. And then from here, you're going to tap build number repeatedly. And I'm gonna type in my password, it's super secret. Now that I have that unlocked, I'm now a developer. So what this allows for is me to tweak some things and that is the overall speed of the phone in terms of the way it moves. So under developer options, we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to the drawing area. Now this will allow you to change certain things such as all of these animations. You wanna change all of these animations to 0.5. This is going to make it faster than the animations being off and better than the animations reduced. So basically this is the best overall experience you can get. And you'll immediately notice a speed difference in just how your phone moves overall. So I think you will definitely like this. All right guys, those are a bit of the tricks and tips on how to save battery life and speed your overall device up. Again, I could even tweak it more, but that's just kind of the basics I wanted to show you guys for this device. Let me know what your guys thoughts are in the comment section down below. Thank you as always for watching. Make sure to check out all of our other S20 videos. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.